Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're gonna be talking about Git, uh, or I guess version control systems in general, but that Git is forever. This is a phrase that I say a lot and I wanna quantify some mistakes that people make and how you can avoid them. Uh, let's jump into it. Okay, so what, what do I say when I mean Git is forever? Uh, this is kind of the point of a version control system in general in that like every time that you commit something, you can always retrieve the code from that commit. That's kind of the point. Uh, for instance, if we want to go to pre-commit and we look at log reverse, uh, we could go all the way back to the initial commit in 2014 and, you know, I think it was called pre-commit.py at the time. Yeah, you can find the source code for the very first version of pre-commit. And if I needed something from here, I could pull it out and, and run it and use it. And uh, and the way it used to work was, was pretty different, but uh, oddly, it looks pretty similar back then. Um, where's the part where it prints the dotted lines? Yeah, dots, pass fail. I'm pretty sure it even, yeah, even uses the same coloring. Uh, but anyway, you can find the history of, of a Git project and pull out code from the past. That's the point. Uh, this means that uh, kind of two things, and I'll, I'll go into some examples of this as I go through it. The first is you should not worry about deleting things because you will always be able to retrieve it. This means you shouldn't ever have checked in, commented out code. You shouldn't have you know chunks of files that are intentionally unused. Uh, you should be trying to clean that stuff up because it can add cognitive overload to working on a repository. You know, it means more stuff to search. It's, you know, you may be trying to fix a bug in a file that's never even running. It can be really confusing. Uh, and commented out code, uh, it's just distracting, and looks kind of floppy. Um, I guess there aren't any technical problems to it though. <clears throat> and the second thing is, uh, you should be wary about what you check in because those things will be in the repository forever. Forever and ever, <laughs> contributing to the repository size. Let's talk about the first one first. Um, I have a Python file, which is a good example of that first thing, which is don't check in commented out code. <laughs> I found almost this exact comment in many, many repositories, especially at work through through the years, uh, which is like a bunch of commented out code with a two that's like, we might need this in the future. Uh, this one actually, the blame is only a couple weeks ago, so admittedly it might actually be true, but most of the time that I see this, it's you know a, a comment from years ago. You're not gonna need this function. Just Just let it go, just delete it. If you need it, you can find it in the Git history. You can you know, look at the earlier versions of this file and find that uh, uh, function there. The other thing that I see people do is keep around uh, intentionally dead files. For instance, this repo has an uh, archive directory of old GitHub workflows. These don't run. Uh, they, just, they just sit here taking up, you know, I mean, not, not really taking up space because they would take up space whether or not you delete them because they live in the history forever. Uh, but they're not running, just delete them. If you need them, you can find them in the history, as, as always. Um, the other thing that I want to talk about is as you check in files to a repo, they're going to be there permanently forever. Uh, now, this is actually a, a project that I'm um, working on to improve their repository health and their contributor setup and their uh, governance model and all those sorts of things. Um, and one thing that I noticed is that uh, cloning this repo takes forever because it is almost half a gigabyte. And it's a programming language. It shouldn't be this big. It shouldn't, it's just, you know, it should mostly just be text at that point. Um, but the reason that it's large is because some sins have been committed in the past, and we're going to look at those. Uh, fortunately, we can use this tool that if you search for the Stack Overflow post, you'll be able to find it. Um, this shell one-liner is awesome for finding old Git objects. I've copied it here and uh, made it slightly more readable. Of course, not perfectly readable because I didn't realize it was behind my face, but that is what it is. Uh, and if we run this, it's going to spit out every object in the repo, every single object in the repo, and uh, tell you the size, which is really useful. So you can see here, for instance, these two files <laughs> that shouldn't have been checked in. These are like Webpack cache files. Shouldn't have been checked in in the first place are ten, like no 20% of the repo size. Just right here, just these two files. Um, and so avoiding, you know, potentially avoiding this one mistake at that point in time uh, could have could have saved the repository by nearly, you know, 110 megabytes of size, which is wild to me. 
Um, there's another fun one that I wanted to show, this one. I, I have no explanation for this file. This file is actually really funny. Uh, git cat file blob this less. Uh, this is just a giant markdown file with repeated code samples. And it goes on for 400,000 lines. <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea why it's here. Um, and it was promptly deleted after being checked in, which is yeah, another fun thing. But that that 10 megabyte file, that 400,000 line file, is going to contribute to the repository size forever. Um, so I guess you know the summary of the second point is be wary of what you check in because it will live forever and it'll contribute to this uh, this this file size forever. Now there there are some you know there's there's a little a bright side to this which is there are tools that can help you prevent this. Um, there are many tools. I think they're not very good because it's really hard to do. There are many tools that detect dead code being checked in. Um, you know like commented out code. Uh, I haven't found any success ones ones that I felt confident enough in because it's hard to detect it's hard to tell whether code is actually code or not especially when it's a comment when it's not code and then it's not running I, you know it's it's difficult and I haven't found a good one yet but for the second part um, these large files you could use a tool such as pregament and here's a pregament hook that I wrote a long time ago uh, the original goal of this hook was to uh, prevent a repository from getting worse. And so it's not really designed as an enforcer unless you use this option here. Um, I would recommend this option moving forward, but of changing changing the backward compatibility here didn't really make too much sense. Uh, but this prevents you from adding large files to your repo. So you can set this up, you know, you can set it up in CI and prevent a repository from growing over time. Uh, or, or at least growing with large files that you probably shouldn't check in in the first place. Now, there are some situations where you do actually want to check in large files. And for that, I would recommend something like git LFS. Basically, git LFS is a pointer to some external blob storage. And so it only is going to keep that little you know, tiny piece of text in your repository. And then there's tooling around it to pull down the other files. Um, I've seen a similar system to this before LFS existed, where uh, it was like it was this post post checkout git hook that found a particular subdirectory of uh, S3 URLs and it would pull them down and put them into the source code um, and then get ignore them in special ways. And LFS is kind of a more polished version of that. Uh, but anyway, it's a, it's a good idea to prevent you from checking in large files because they will live forever and they will contribute to the large Git uh, repository size. Now you can sort of fix these problems by rewriting the history, but that's pretty destructive and disruptive. I am going to probably do that with this repo because it is relatively young with relatively few contributors. And so we can sort of fix the sins and prevent them going forward and hopefully get this down to a more manageable size. Um, but that's for another video. Anyway, hopefully you found this useful. If there are additional things you'd like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next one.